his early successes encouraged Gauss to keep a diary. Here at the University of Göttingen, you can still read it, if you can understand Latin. Fortunately, I had help. The, the first entry is in 1796. Is it possible to lift it up? Uh, yes, but be careful. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, this is, it's, uh, it's really one of the most valuable uh, things that this library possesses. Yeah, I, can, yeah. I can believe that. He writes beautifully. Uh, it is aesthetically very pleasing, you know, even yes. if people don't understand what, yes. what this is. It is yes. just beautiful uh, to look at. So oh, I'm going to put yes. this down, actually. Yes. It's very delicate. Yes. Yeah. The diary proves that some of Gauss's ideas were a hundred years ahead of their time. Uh, here are some signs and these in sort of integrals. So Very different this, sort of mathematics. Th this was yes. This was uh, the first intimations of the theory of elliptic functions, which was w one of one of his other great uh, oh, yeah. developments. So that's uh, already. Getting yes. very and here, here you see something that is basically the Riemann zeta function appearing. Wow. Yeah. Gosh. That's very impressive. The zeta function has become a vital element in our present understanding of the distribution of the building blocks of all numbers, the primes. There is somewhere in the diary here where he says, um, I've made this wonderful discovery, and incidentally, a son was born today. <laughs> <laughs> we see his priorities. Yeah. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Gauss's mathematics has touched many parts of the mathematical world, but I'm going to just choose one of them, a fun one, imaginary numbers. In the 16th and 17th century, European mathematicians imagined the square root of minus one and gave it the symbol i. They didn't like it much, but it solved equations that couldn't be solved any other way. Imaginary numbers have helped us to understand radio waves, to build bridges and aeroplanes. They're even the key to quantum physics, the science of the subatomic world. They've provided a map to see how things really are. But back in the early 19th century, they had no map, no picture of how imaginary numbers connected with real numbers. Where is this new number? There's no room on the number line for the square root of minus one. I've got the positive numbers running out here, the negative numbers running here. The great step is to create a new direction of numbers, perpendicular to the number line. And that's where the square root of minus one is. Gauss was not the first to come up with this two-dimensional picture of numbers, but he was the first person to explain it all clearly. He gave people a picture to understand how imaginary numbers worked. And once they developed this picture, their immense potential could really be unleashed. Morgan, uh, and cafe bitter? Yes. Yeah. Okay. His maths led to acclaim and financial security for Gauss. He could have gone anywhere, but he was happy enough to settle down and spend the rest of his life in sleepy Göttingen. Unfortunately, as his fame developed, so his character deteriorated. A naturally conservative shy man, he became increasingly distrustful and grumpy. Many young mathematicians across Europe regarded Gauss as a god, and they would send in their theorems, their conjectures, even some proofs. But most of the time, he wouldn't respond. And even when he did, it was generally to say either they got it wrong or he'd proved it already. His dismissal or lack of interest in the work of lesser mortals sometimes discouraged some very talented mathematicians from pursuing their ideas. But occasionally, Gauss also failed to follow up on his own insights including one very important insight that might have transformed the mathematics of his time. Fifteen kilometres outside Göttingen stands what is known today as the Gauss Tower. Wow, <laughs> that is stunning. This is, this is really a view. fantastic view here, yes. Gauss took on many projects for the Hanoverian government, including the first proper survey of all the lands of Hanover. Now, was this Gauss's choice to do this surveying. I mean, for a mathematician, it sounds like the last thing I'd want to do. But, he uh, wanted to do it. Um, the, the, the major point in doing this was to discover the, the shape of the Earth. But he also started speculating about something even more revolutionary, the shape of space. So he's thinking, you know, there may not be anything flat yes, in, the, uh, yes, uh, in, exactly. in the universe. In the, exactly. Uh -huh. And if we were living in a curved universe, there wouldn't be anything flat. And this led Gauss to question one of the central tenets of mathematics, Euclid's geometry. He realized that this geometry, far from universal, depended on the idea of space as flat. 
It just didn't apply to a universe that was curved. But in the early 19th century, Euclid's geometry was seen as God-given, and Gauss didn't want any trouble. So he never published anything. Another mathematician, though, had no such fears. In mathematics, it's often helpful to be part of a community where you can talk to and bounce ideas off others. But inside such a mathematical community, it can sometimes be difficult to come up with that one idea that completely challenges the status quo. And then the breakthrough often comes from somewhere else. Mathematics can be done in some pretty weird places. I'm in Transylvania, which is fairly appropriate because I'm in search of a lone wolf. Janusz Bolyai spent much of his life hundreds of miles away from the mathematical centers of excellence. This is the only portrait of him that I was able to find. Unfortunately, it isn't actually him. It's one the Communist Party in Romania started circulating when people got interested in Bolyai's theories in the 1960s. But they couldn't find a picture of Janos, so they substituted a picture of somebody else instead. Born in 1802, Janos was the son of Farkos Bolyai, who was a maths teacher. He realized his son was a mathematical prodigy, so he wrote to his old friend Carl Friedrich Gauss, asking him to tutor the boy. Sadly, Gauss declined. So, instead of becoming a professional mathematician, Janos joined the army. But mathematics remained his first love. Maybe there's something about the air here, because Bolyai carried on doing his mathematics in his spare time. He started to explore what he called imaginary geometries, where the angles in triangles add up to less than 180. The amazing thing is that these imaginary geometries make perfect mathematical sense. Bolyai's new geometry has become known as hyperbolic geometry. The best way to imagine it is a kind of mirror image of a sphere where lines curve back on each other. It's difficult to represent it since we're so used to living in space which appears to be straight and flat. In his hometown of Tirgamoris, I went looking for more about Bolyai's revolutionary mathematics. His memory is certainly revered here. The museum contains a collection of Bolyai-related artifacts, some of which might be considered distinctly Transylvanian. It's still got some hair on it. Uh, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, kind it's of a little bit gruesome. But, <laughs> but the object I like most here is a beautiful model of Bolyai's geometry. I mean, you've got the shortest distance between here and here. If you stick on this surface, it's not a straight line, but this curved line which sort of bends into the triangle. So here's a surface where the shortest distances which define the triangle add up to less than 180. Bolyai published his work in 1831 and his father sent his old friend Gauss a copy. Gauss wrote back straight away, giving his approval. But Gauss refused to praise the young Bolyai, because he said the person he should be praising was himself. He'd worked it all out a decade or so before. Uh, actually, there is a letter from Gauss to another friend of his, where he says that I regard this young geometer, Bolyai, as, as a genius of the first order. Yeah. But Gauss never thought to tell Bolyai that, and young Janos was completely disheartened. Another body blow soon followed. Somebody else had developed exactly the same idea, but had published two years before him, the Russian mathematician Nicholas Lobachevsky. It was all downhill for Bolyai after that. With no recognition or career, he didn't publish anything else. Eventually, he went a little crazy. In 1860, Janos Bolyai died in obscurity.